Well, I'm very pleased to be here this morning with Mr. Jim Quinn, Chairman of the Friends of the Holy Land. And it's been a great delight for me to be able to present to the Friends, to Jim himself, something in the order of £85,000, which has been gathered together on the occasion of my becoming a member of the College of Cardinals for the Friends of the Holy Land. And Jim, thank you very much for coming and thank you for all the work you do. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the work of the Friends of the Holy well, Land. Well, I can, but firstly, I'd like to thank you for the money, if I may. Uh, yes. That will be put to very good use, as you well know. Uh, 85,000 pounds is a, a huge sum of money and will m work immense good in the Holy Land. Uh, the Friends, uh, well, I well remember being in uh, 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 the uh, uh, cathedral at St. Chad's in Birmingham in 2009, when you got a, a group of people uh, from the pilgrimage that you set up in 2007, uh, and particularly with Michael Whelan, uh, uh, and uh, you announced then that uh, uh, a new charity was to be set up to look after the poor of the Holy Land. That was uh, uh, set up and, uh, and launched by uh, the Patriarch of Jerusalem in 2009 at, uh, at your cathedral then at St Chad's, and later in uh, the week at uh, Liverpool. Since then, uh, it started with a blank piece of paper and a, a, a bank account with nothing in, and it's grown now to £400,000 a year plus. So we've, we've gathered together a million pounds in four years, or five years almost. That has been put to use right at the bottom of the, the, the ladder in the Holy Land. The poor of the poor, as uh, the Pope describes them, that's where we're trying to help in education, in health, in housing, in water, in, in anything where there is a need, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, and that puts great stress on our organisation because that takes a lot of work. Uh, and we've got a, a, an immensely uh, enthusiastic volunteer group in Bethlehem who are helping us. Uh, and we are now in the midst of trying to reorganise the whole of our, our operation, as it were, uh, so that we can deal with this great source of funds that's coming in from the Christian community in England. Uh, and long may it continue. Well, that's great. And could you tell us a little bit, or tell me a little bit, what you hope to do with the money that has been so kindly uh, given by, mainly by people in the Archdiocese of Liverpool and in Birmingham and in here in Westminster? What, what particular things do you hope to do with this? We, we, we gather together, and we are gathering together, a number of projects uh, that will be suitable projects to help individuals in need uh, in the Holy Land. Uh, and we've got, a, 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 over the last few months, we've built up a number of projects, not particularly for the £85,000, but just so that we can plan our future as to how best to use the money that is being given by uh, the people here. Uh, the the particular projects that we think that would be best suited at this moment, uh, we have one project uh, in Betsuhur, which is uh, one of the towns uh, of Bethlehem, and that is to build 10 apartments for uh, the youngsters. Uh, the need to keep the youngsters in the Holy Land has been stressed over the last decade or more. Uh, and so we want to build 10 apartments which they will be able to fund, but we need to pump prime that. We've got to provide infrastructure, cisterns and water, uh, and only when we get to the first floor and uh, uh, we can start building the apartments proper will the youngsters actually be able to contribute their bank loans to the, the cost of that. So that's pump priming. And once that has been built and the youngsters have uh, uh, acquired their apartments, then our pump priming money will come back and it can then go into another project. So that's a sustainable project that we're hoping that that money will support us in. The other thing is, uh, in this country, we just turn on a tap and out comes potable water. Uh, in the Holy Land, as you know, that does not happen. Uh, indeed, uh, there are occasions when uh, there is no water at all for a family. Uh, I was in the Holy Land last week uh, with a family. Uh, one of the, the men that I particularly wanted to see uh, has uh, suffered terribly uh, with cancer and is really towards the end of his life. For five days, they've had no water. So uh, it is a, a, a really important topic there. 
uh, and what we are doing in conjunction with uh, uh, an independent uh, group from Bethlehem University is we're trying to put together a project whereby we can provide cisterns, as they call them in the Holy Land, which are storage compartments underneath the house for rainwater and for water from the main supply. Uh, and uh, uh, those cost about $3,000 each. So uh, we can allocate a part of that because that, that's quite an urgent project. Uh, and we can allocate a part of the funds to use uh, for, for that purpose. And those are the two projects that Lovely. we've got in mind at the moment. Lovely. I mean, Friends of the Holy Land is a wonderful way in which the links between the Catholic and the Christians in this country can be made with their fellow Christians in the Holy Land itself. And of course, another way is through prayer. And I'd like to thank you for the prompt that you have given to us all, that when the Holy Father is there on the 25th of May, in the afternoon, many, if not most of our Catholic parishes will hold an hour of prayer before the Blessed Sacrament in the, on that afternoon, exactly the time when Pope Francis is meeting the Christian communities in Bethlehem itself. So thank you very much for that suggestion yeah. too. Thank you. Thanks for the thanks. Uh, yes, and uh, you, you mentioned the, uh, the Christians as opposed to the Catholics. Uh, that's one of the very exciting things about being involved in the Friends of the Holy Land is that uh, there is no uh, denominational feel about it at all. It is very much uh, an ecumenical uh, uh, charity. Uh, and indeed, you mentioned the Holy Hour for the Catholics. In the Anglican Church, they are having an hour of prayer at the same time. And over the last few days, we've had enthusiastic letters from a, a number of the bishops of, uh, uh, of uh, the Anglican Church uh, saying what an inspirational idea it is and how much they wish to join in uh, with that uh, one hour whilst the Pope is with the Christian families in Bethlehem. So that, that looks as if it could be quite a moment for the church. That is one of our, our objectives, is to uh, not only increase awareness in this country of uh, the, uh, the plight of the Holy Land and the needs of the Holy Land, but also to encourage prayer. And so this uh, 25th May is a, a perfect example of how we can perform our, our, uh, our mission. Well, I think there's a lovely coherence an increase of numbers of people going on pilgrimage to the Holy Land, a really important vehicle by which they can express the practical support and this call to prayer to support the work of peace in the Middle East, uh, which is such an important part of our human story. Jim, thank you very, very much thank indeed. Very much. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. So it really is important, and I do encourage you, please, to use that hour on Sunday the 25th of May, the hour between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock in prayer so that we are in absolute solidarity with Pope Francis and with the Catholics and the Christians of Bethlehem as they meet together and we are all there supporting his mission and praying for peace. <laughs>